Amen. Hallelujah. Say, the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. All right. You got a Bible? Amen. Do you have a Bible that is usable? I Can you write in it? All right. That's the kind I have. Amen. Last, uh, last, wasn't here last Wednesday. I was, I was, uh, was I here last Wednesday? No. No, I was, I don't know. Don did last Wednesday. So it was the Wednesday before last. Time just gets all stinging. Uh, last time that I, I was here, uh, I began to speak about the subject of sin. S-I-N. Now I realize that's not a popular subject. I've, a lot of people don't want to deal with sin because it makes people feel bad. You know, there's, I've had people tell me, you know, you Pentecostals need to get with the program and quit making people feel guilty. You know, I understand what they're saying. I don't agree with what they're saying, a lot of them, because a lot of them are just as confused as whatever, whatever analogy you want to use. Uh, a lot of people are just confused about it because you don't try to make people feel guilty. But the truth is, if guilt never comes up on you, then why would you ever want to get it right? Your heart needs to smite you and say that's not right. Even if you're so mad, somebody tells you, I'd watch it, I'd watch it. Don't tell me to watch it, I know what I'm going to do. And you say, my God, why didn't I listen to you? Even in those cases... You still come around knowing your heart will smite you to do it right. You know, there was a preacher that I attended his church when I was in Tulsa in 1985-86. Very well-known preacher, uh, household name in Tulsa. And he eventually got to preaching, there is no hell. Because Jesus died for the world. And since he died for the world... The world is redeemed. Why would you need to get saved if Jesus already redeemed the world? So therefore, since the world is redeemed, there's no need for hell. It's just a thing that we do to try to make people feel like they need to do something that God already done. But you know, certain things you can't fix. And uh, I I I, I wouldn't even call his his statement even stupid I would call it completely deception from the realm of darkness there's a difference between deceived being stupid and being deceived from the realm of darkness amen and then you got people that preach that uh, uh, once you get saved it don't matter what you do there's no need to repent I've talked to both of them I've read from both of their stuff you don't need to repent once you get saved because once you got saved your spirit got born again and the real you the spirit which we preach the real us is our spirit but they add because your spirit cannot sin God judges you after your spirit it's your spirit that's eternal not your flesh so if your flesh gets involved in all that stuff God doesn't care they're saying you really hear this stuff I wish I was making this up, but the truth is, it's the truth. And then you got people that I was more common with growing up, that if you did the least little thing wrong, you're going to hell. There was not much talk about heaven, it was hell. You're going to be with that devil of the devil. Why do you think I was baptized all those times? Because I was convinced. I did something wrong. That I didn't know what I did wrong. I, I, I tell people j- jokingly, I got delivered from candy cigarettes when I was 12. But every time I did something wrong, I felt like I was going to hell. Well, you got to get saved again. So God, I pray that I get born again on top of my born again. So I can get baptized within my baptism. And then I had to get born again in my born again agains. And I got baptized again. So I've been baptized in ponds, baptistries, lakes, all three realms. I don't know if I've been baptized in a creek. But all three realms I was baptized. And every time 
I went through that. I didn't understand that all I had to do was go before my God and repent and get clean. If you sin, you have an advocate with Jesus Christ the righteous. If you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and cleanse you or make you and put you back in the place of righteousness again. That's why, as I mentioned before, I went back today and listened to the message that I did a couple Wednesdays ago because it's very important for me to know what I said and where I went and so I wouldn't have to preach the same one over because the truth is all we have to do is understand repentance is real. Repentance is not just feeling sorry. Repentance means I'm going to turn from what I am doing. Now, Pastor, what happens if somebody keeps repenting over and over and over again? If their heart is really sincere about it, then God is really sincere about keeping his word. Amen. And I mentioned it last time, and that is I was always looking for a confirmation of feelings. But the enemy knew what I was looking for, and he made sure I got everything except a confirmation of a feeling of forgiveness. And I've talked to more people. I just don't feel forgiven. I just don't feel forgiven. Well, what does feeling forgiven feel like? I don't know, but I know I don't have it. I don't feel forgiven. Well, what, what did the Bible say? Did the Bible say that if you confess your sins, he's faithful to forgive you? Yes, but I don't feel like he did. Well, what makes you think that you don't feel like he did? I just don't feel like he's forgiven me. So your feeling is greater than God's truth. Or now by you saying, I don't feel like he's forgiven me or he won't forgive me. Now you're saying that God's not just and true. So now you got an indictment against God. Well, I don't mean to have an indictment. It don't matter what you mean because you don't believe it and you're saying it doesn't matter. I don't feel like he's forgiven me. And he says, I have forgiven you. But you're saying he hasn't forgiven me. Now because he said he would if you ask and you ask but you're saying he didn't. Now you got an indictment against God. That maybe he's not true. But God is true. Aren't you glad he's a God of a second chance? A God of a third chance? How many's ever need the second chance? How many's ever needed the third chance? How many's ever ran out of hand, fingers? All right, I'm just asking. Amen? It don't matter if you got to start counting your wife's toes. If you're sincere, he'll forgive you. All right? But this foolishness, I'll go ahead and do it, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll repent later. Well, what if you go ahead and do it, and you don't have a chance to repent later? See, repentance is real. Repentance is real. And so I wanted to look at this. And uh, last time I talked about what is sin. What is sin? So let's just read it this time. Go with me to the book of 1 John chapter 3. Yeah. Then we're going to go back to the book of Romans. And we're going to roam through the book of Romans a bit. So 1 John, not St. John. 1 John. Chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness, or anyway, can, can commits transgression. For sin is transgression. But that was verse 4. Commits transgression. For sin is transgression of the law. All right? The Bible describes, the, the Bible, uh, describes sin, or, or the, 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 the biblical as transgression of the law of God and rebellion against God. That's what it is. And so what you need to do that we cannot just continue to transgress against the word of God. So, does God take his word serious? We used, you know, we, there's a thing about the Big Ten. That's not the, the colleges. See, you all just went into sin. See how easy it is? And I'm going to tell you what kind of sin that is in a minute. 
There's a classification for it. Maddie's like, I, I didn't sin. I'm still righteous over here. I'm, I'm just saying. Go blue, she's saying. Go blue, blue. But anyway, but the Big Ten is the commandments. All right? Can anybody name any of the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not steal, you see, kill, commit adultery. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Some of your name in 12 and 13, I think. <laughs> Making them up on the fly, man. Because, hey, it's classification. So God, did God give the Big Ten so that he can remove fun from all of them? No. He gave it to them so they could live. Because God doesn't want you to die. Because we'll read the scripture in a minute as we go back to Romans. The wages of sin is death. So sin always is tied to death. Sin is simply transgression against the law of God. So anytime you transgress the law of God which is not the Old Testament law, it's the commandment of God. Anytime you transgress against the commandment of God, it is sin. So we also said last time that the Bible says that anything, according to James 4, 17, therefore to him that knows to do good or do right, and he or she does not do it, it is sin. So there is a thing that you know to do right and you don't do it is sin. So there's a lot of areas is sin. Now, I'm not saying that you know you should have ate the carrot sticks, but you ate the pie. You know you should have done right by eating the carrot sticks, okay? I'm not getting into you sin by eating the pie. I'm talking about transgression against the, the word, all right? Of course, I've had people try to compare everything and says, well, you know, gluttony is just as bad as drinking. I understand that. I told one person a long time ago, I understand that. Being a glutton is not good. And, and, uh, and being one that's overtaken by alcohol is not good. But I said, I've never yet had to go and counsel a family because he beat his children by eating too many Twinkies. <laughs> May have slapped the boy for taking one of his Twinkies and messed up, but <laughs> so. So the point is, there's always that. Well, that person's no different than the one out there laying drunk. Look at him. Look, look, look at them, look at them, look at them, look at them, look at them. You never met anybody like that. That's what I love about coming to peace. We're all perfect. <laughs> and we all repent and say amen. So the point is, he that knows to do right and doesn't do it to him, it's what? Okay, we know to do right according to the word of God, okay? And that's what we have to look at. So... Let's go back to the basics since we got on pretty good tonight. Let's go back to the basics. And that is some of the things that I mentioned. There's certain things that we talked about. There's a lot of thou shall not. We know thou shall not steal. Thou shall not covet. Thou shall not false witness. Thou shall not, you know, murder. Uh, but hatred is as what? Murder. Amen. And rebellion is as the sin of So you look at all kind of things. I would never get involved in the Ouija board. But I'm as rebellious as you're going to get. Well, rebellious is as a sin of witchcraft. You know, there's a lot of different things to it. People just like to interpret the way they want to interpret it. Amen. But the truth is, you got all of these thou shall not do. But I promise you, God's got more to do's. Amen. I've said a long time ago, if we take all of our time to do all the do's, we won't have time to do the don'ts. If we could, we won't. We can't, so we don't. So we take notes on that. <laughs> so you have to understand that once you get to the place, even though you could, you won't.
you won't because your heart is fixed on what it is. Now, so we're going to talk tonight about, well, let me go back to this. This basic thing is the reason why we have power over this is because we are born again. Born again. As the old Pentecostals say, barned again. So we have been born again. That means you've been reborn. Why do I have to get reborn? Because Adam was made in the nature and the image of God. He sinned and he died. So everyone born after that, there is children, babies are alive unto God. The age of accountability, I understand that. According to the Paul, Romans chapter 7, he says, Alive without the law once that when commandment came, sin revived and I died. I understand all about the thing of the, of the age of accountability. But I'm talking about human people have to be reborn. They have to be reborn. Amen? Have to be reborn. As a brother said to me one time, I said, you saved? He said, bones life, brother. I've been bones life. So you have to, you know that you've got to be born again. You've got to be born again. If any man is in Christ and born again, he is a new. If, you're, if you were here, we talked about it. Old things, behold, what did I say the old thing was that passed away? What was that old thing? Your sin nature. Adam, when he sinned, he died. The day you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. Well, he lived to be hundreds of years old. Where did he die? He died. The real him died. He died on the inside. He was a walking dead man. And everyone after that, after they reach that age of accountability, we become walking dead people until we are revived and resurrected out of darkness into light. And even though you are resurrected out of darkness into light, you are born again. The nature of God is in you. Everything you need is in you. The love of God is in you. The patience of God is in you. Everything you need is already in you because the Holy Spirit is in you. How much of him? All of him. All of him. Paul says, from top to bottom, side to side, he's there. Now, why is discipleship so important? Why is church so important? So that you can learn how to control your flesh and get your mind renewed. So that you can have a total man walking with God. Spirit, soul, and body. So the sin nature is gone. If the sin nature is gone then why do we sin, Pastor? If, if I don't have the nature to sin, then why do I sin? Well, I said the last time, because you're probably stupid, but I'll be a little more polite tonight. I said the reason why you sin is because you don't discipline your flesh and you won't renew your mind. The truth is, the reason why people live defeated, they have undeveloped spirits. That means you can't improve. There's no birth defects in the born-again experience. Let me say it again. There's no birth defects in the new birth. Now, I had birth defects when I was born. I have a stuttering problem. I had a couple problems. But there was no birth defects when I got born again. My spirit's never had a birth defect. It's holding God. Now, this outward man, we've had to deal with a few. But there's no birth defects in my spirit. So the truth is, but when I got born again, even the Bible bears out that we become spiritual babies. Do you leave a baby by himself? Do you care for a baby? When a baby messes his diaper or messes his pants, when you think he ought to make it to the potty real quick, and all of a sudden they look at you with that half grin, and you know you did it again, didn't you? Do you, do you say, I can't believe you did it, pop! Now, some people did. They're, they're, they're abusive. We're not talking about that. We're talking about wholesome parents. That's all right, honey. That's all right. The daddy will say, that's all right. Mommy will clean you up. <laughs> Amen. I'm, am I right? Amen. That's all right. Mommy will clean you up. A <laughs> grandma will clean you up. That's all right. Isn't that amazing how patient we are? We'll just go get you another set of clothes. No problem. 
But you let someone get born again that came out of a certain sin and they messed their spiritual pants one time. <gasps> I can't believe you did that. <laughs> no, you got to teach them. That's what discipleship's about. That's what the Word of God is about. Desiring the sincere milk of the Word, Peter said. Desiring the sincere milk of the Word that we may grow thereby. So Peter says the sincere milk of the word is there so that we may grow, but you got to desire it. So when someone gets born again, that's why, that's why we have to do our best. And, and early Pentecost, you know, I, 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 the reason I say this is because I preached for so many preachers for so many years. Well, if they got something, they'll be back. Isn't that amazing? I mean, could you imagine Allie, Robert, Allie Levesey Robertson? Had that little baby. I haven't seen it yet, but I've seen pictures. Woo! Could you imagine them leaving it at the hospital and say, well, if it got something, it'll, it'll find its way back. <laughs> well, they got saved at the altar. I wonder where they're at. Well, if they, if they really got something, they'll, they'll, they'll come back. How about, let's take children. And help put into them. I think there's a whole lot more. That's why discipleship is so important. That's why taking time with people and let them understand. I know it's a different subject, but the point is when you got born again, you got born again not as a spiritual mature person. You got born again as a spiritual baby, and you've got to grow. That's why, you know, infants, adolescents, Every time somebody looks at you, get your feelings hurt. Well, that's, that's what happens in different childhood stages. And, but people get through that the more they walk with God. The more they walk with God. Amen? The more they walk with God. So, when you understand this, that we are new creations, all right? We are new creations. And what got born again is your spirit. All right. Uh, let me read a verse because I, I think some... I get my spirit, so some people are struggling with that for a second. Go, go to the book of James. Let me, let me fi find this word in the book of James. Go to the book of James a minute. Where's the book of James? After Hebrews. After Hebrews. In the book of James. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Now, when, when, when we understand this, uh, let me see which verse I want to read here. Uh, find that verse receive with meekness for some reason I'm, I'm uh, I didn't have it there receive with meekness the engrafted word uh, 121 I'm looking right at it I'm looking right at it therefore lay aside I'm looking right at it therefore lay aside all filthiness would that be sin and over and overflow of iniquity now if you look at chapter 1, first part, James, the bondservant of God, verse 1, and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting to the 12 tribes. He's not talking to the lost. He's talking to the redeemed. All right? He's talking to the redeemed. Then he says to the redeemed, therefore lay aside all filthiness, overflow of wickedness, receive with meekness the engrafted, the implanted word which is able to save your soul you know some here's what people said you know uh that person got their soul saved last night at the altar you know eight souls got saved last night no actually none of the souls got saved what got saved was their spirit 
what got saved was her spirit. The soul is your mind, your will, your intellect. And the reason why we understand that, because he's a triune God and we are a triune people, or what they considered as a trichotomy, spirit, soul, and body. And for somebody to say spirit and soul is the same thing, you'd have to believe in a two-part dichotomy and not tri. You'd have to believe in a two-part that it was just spirit, soul is one, and the body is the next. No, that's why the Bible says the word of God is a two-edged sword dividing asunder spirit from soul. If they're one, how do you divide it? Dividing asunder, spirit from soul. So he says to the people already born again, receive with meekness the engrafted word, the implanted word, which is able to save your soul. This is, don't be, con, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your soul, your mind. So to keep people out of the realm, if the new you is born again, your sin nature is gone. How do you keep all of this stuff, wickedness and all this done? How do you keep it out? By renewing your mind. Receive with meekness. Lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. And receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able not only, it's not what only got you born again, now it's what's going to save your mind. That's what it is. It's going to save your mind. So thank God that I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. How? As or according to, as compared to. I pray that you prosper and be in health as your soul, according to. That means if you renewed only 25%, that's where your prosperity and health is going to be. I pray that you prosper, be in health, according to as your soul prospers. So as your soul prospers, everything else comes in line. Did you get that? As your soul prospers, everything else comes in line. That's why you got to read, read, read the word before you go to bed. Merrily, 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 act on what it says. I taught young kids one day, and I had children and grandchildren. That's what you got to do. You've got to put it in you. you got to put it in you. There's a little puppet that did that all the time. Matt, he'd watch it. He would always say, read, read, read the word before you go to bed. Merrily, 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 merrily. Act on what it says. A little better than row, row, row your boat, isn't it? got to get your mind renewed well it's renewed in some areas you're probably right but not in all areas I had a men's meeting here years ago probably about 16 years ago and we were talking about renewing our minds you're saying I thought you're gonna preach about sin I'm going to you just gotta give me a minute and uh, we was talking about how different people develop their faith in different areas how many knows you can be strong faith in one area but not in the other area and uh, one of the persons that spoke up that night is here, working somewhere. I don't see him in here. The other one is, hasn't been here for years. One of them says, you know, Pastor, I can't hardly remember a time that my family or one of us gets sick that we just don't, that we just, it's almost like easy to get the power of God on the scene and get healed. It's just easy for us. He says, but I struggle monthly and believe in God for money it is a struggle another person didn't say a whole lot says you know now that you said that when it comes to money I never struggle but the first symptom I get or the first thing I get fear tries to hit me physically I struggle on the other side why whatever you build yourself up on that's what you're going to be whatever muscle you practice that's the muscle that's going to be good. Amen? Whatever muscle you practice, that's the muscle that's going to be good. But when you renew your mind according to the Word of God, and you cover the provision of God, and your mind's being renewed in the process to where it is always, all aspects being renewed. 
always thought I've looked at a lot of I look at a lot of uh, devotionals. But there's a devotional that I've never found that I think would be the best devotional to write. And uh, I started pulling scriptures for it a long time ago. But, uh, but I think that you could take seven main subjects of the Bible. Healing, prosperity, faith, redemption, righteousness, love. And you take whichever one, Holy Spirit, you take seven top subjects, and every day you take one of those, and every week they read something about faith, something about redemption, something about love, something about healing. Every day, every Monday, it's, it's faith, but you got to get your week started. Every Wednesday, something else, and you look at it, and you do a devotional like that, and you're covering everything instead of being random. You are perci- you're doing it with precision. Don't you think that'd be a good devotional? It'd be it's precision to make that happen, and and to make it. So so I asked somebody year, years ago, and uh, I still have them in my desk drawer. This was a long time ago. This must have been 15 years ago. I asked. I said, why don't why don't everyone take your favorite healing verse? already knew what I had down. We made them, we made those bookmarks I left. Give me your favorite healing verse and write it on a card and put it in the offering basket. And I had several of them. Some of them were the same one. I had several of them. I figured if I could get 52 of them or better, different, or if I can get some of the others, you know, a person could just go online and just take their voice and do something about it. But it's doing something that deals with the soul. With the soul. Amen. Now, Romans. Let's go to the book of Romans. You should have told me to start there first. <laughs> Romans 6. Verse 1. What shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And the answer is what? No, God forbid. How shall we who died to sin live any longer therein? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were baptized with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. Amen? And so then he, then he begins to talk about things. Look at verse 15. Uh, let's look at verse 7, then we're going to for 15. For he who is, or he who has died, has been free from sin. So, you know, if the old man died, let's look at it that way, and you have been redeemed, you're free from this. Matter of fact, the Bible says the enemy has already been defeated I went to a bedside of a man I'm thinking it was Miami Valley Hospital older man lived a rough 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 I, I you know I figured he knew what who Jesus was but I don't think he had ever ever met him and come to find out that at one time he uh, he was in church I'd have never known it and he lived a rough life he was dying I mean he was rough matter of fact he was so rough the family didn't even know that that I even had a conversation with him, and at his funeral, the closing song was, I have friends in low places. I mean, it was, it's heartbreaking to a funeral like that. Yeah. To them, it's nothing. It was just a, you know, bottoms up, man. Friends in low places. And I said, uh, why do you think you do this? And sincere, you know, people joke about it. Sincere with a tear down his cheek. He said, the devil is real. Now, we joke about it, but I'm telling you what. You don't belong to the devil. You've been reborn. And the devil should not be able to make you do anything. Come on. 
If God can't make you do it, how in the world are you going? Why would you allow the devil to do it? Is the devil that kept me out? Is the devil that caused me to do it? Well, God tried to get you to walk in love. It's amazing how people yield to the enemy. All right? Sin. I'm going to talk about two kinds of sin. Not tonight. I saw some of you going. <laughs> two kinds of sin. <laughs> See, you just sinned right there. No, I'm kidding. Kid, 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 kid. There's two words that are common if you understand studying it. There's the word omission, and there is commission. The sin of omission and the sin of commission. Now, let me define these, and uh, we'll get it started, and we'll have another opportunity. So here it is. The sin of omission is a sin that is a result of not doing things God's word teaches that we ought to do. That means he that knows to do right and does it not, to him it's sin. It's omission. Amen. This sin is easy to hide. Nobody can know it. You could be in the sin of omission and nobody ever know it because it's easy to hide. Never pray. Never read. You know. All things like that. The sin of omission. And we'll, we'll give you examples on how to break that down. And then there is the sin of commission. The sin of commission. Which, which deals with, you know, when you're talking about the sin of commission. Uh, uh, that's just the sin that is openly, it's blatant. It's not able to hide. I've taken these things directly from the Word of God and the book of Galatians and different things. And, uh, and how does this work? So what is the sin of commission? The examples of the sin of commission would be sexual sins like adultery, fornication, bestiality, homosexuality, bisexual, uh, pornography, theft, co covetousness, murder, physical abuse, bullying, all kind of things that you would see. The sins of commission. Oh, that person is living a life of adultery or fornication or idolatry. And everybody knows you don't hide it. So the sin of commission is bad. The sin of omission is bad. But if I would ask most people which one is the most dangerous, they would say commission. Look at all that bad stuff. But actually the most dangerous is the sin of omission. Because that's one you can hide and get away with. That's the one will begin to eat at you like a canker. If you don't get those fixed, that can really mess with you. Amen? Can really mess with you. So when you're looking at sin, let me say this up front. There is only one sin that is unforgivable. And that is the sin unto death, or what we call blaspheming the Holy Spirit. The sin unto death. Every sin outside of that sin is forgivable. Even though some people treat it as if it's not. Every sin is forgivable. You sin against a brother, it's forgivable. You sin against your flesh, it's forgivable. You sin against the Holy Ghost. Now we're in a different story. So I'm going to deal with all of that. I'm going to deal with this because I believe a lot of people. I did a study on the, because remember the story I told you? The devil convinced me that, I, that the Lord wouldn't forgive me again. I mean, I don't even know what I did. I, did, I, I read an article. I, I don't know if I could ever find it again. This, was, this had to be 30 plus years ago. That it was the percentage of people that was in a mental institution because the enemy hijacked our mind because they thought they committed the unpardonable sin. It was a large number. 
in the mental institutions, they did a survey in talking to them that what opened the door to that collapse mentally was they were convinced they committed the unpardonable sin. I'm not going to ask anybody who's ever dealt with that. But the truth is, that demon is a wicked demon that gets on people. I've dealt with it more than once. Not me dealing with myself, with people. There was a man that I knew very close with. Pastor Roth was very close with. I named him. Some of you knew him. Wonderful missionary. Preached around the world. Uh, he would come and sit in my likeness of God office. And we'd just have coffee and some good fellowship. Great man. And one day he came to meet me. I knew he had trouble with depression. He had trouble with depression. And they tried to, you know, describe it wherever it started at. But he sat in my office one day. So I've been here 19, so this had to be 25, maybe 25 years ago minimum. And uh, he said, Brother Ken, I'm going to hell. I said, what makes you think you're going to hell? I've committed the unpardonable sin. I said, tell me what you did. Oh, I can't tell you. It's just too bad. I said, uh, he said, pray for me. Tears, a torment. Pray for me. I've committed the unpardonable sin. Pray for me. I prayed for him. He said, I didn't want to. Just, I mean, you could tell he was tormented because if he could change it, he would change it. I said, brother, I almost said his name. If you committed the unpardonable sin, you wouldn't care if you committed the unpardonable sin. Your spirit would be void. Your conscience would be void of God. You wouldn't be sitting here wanting help. You wouldn't give a rip. You wouldn't have any conscience left. You think that's true? I know it's true. So you don't think I did? No. Five minutes later, I'm going to hell. Five minutes. I'm going to hell. I'm going to hell. Eventually, he ended up on the mental ward at Reed Hospital, the new Reed Hospital. And the family put me down as one of the five that could get in there to him. And I've been dealing with this now months and months and months with him. He loved me, trust me. And uh, I've told this story more than once here over the years. And I went there, and he was sitting in a chair. Once you get there, the medication's on. The medication's on. I said, brother, I'm here. Oh, I'm so glad you come. I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> See, to them, it's psychotic. But it all opened because somewhere the enemy convinced him to commit the unpardonable sin. I, I cry almost thinking about it because I saw the torment. I saw the tears come out of his face. He said, I, I'm going to hell. I said, you're not going to hell. I'm going to hell. Out of all the years I served God, I'm ending it in hell. He said, you're not going to go to hell. And uh, torment. And when you start talking that way around them that are, that are not born again, understand? They think you're even more crazy. So they bring out even more drugs. It's, it's just never ending. And I said, here, after being about 10 minutes, I'm going to lay hands on you. We're going to pray. And we're going to pray, and then we're going to pray in the Spirit. Oh, I can't pray. Now, come on, you're going to pray with me. So we got to pray, and I just started praying in tongues. I started worshiping God. I laid my hand and started praying. I started praying in the Spirit. And up out of his belly... Up out of his belly begin to flow rivers of living water. He lifted both hands and he prayed in the spirit. I'm telling you what, just as pure as heaven can be pure. He prayed in the spirit. I worshiped. I wept. He wept. And he prayed in the spirit. I'm sure they all, I'm sure they pretty medicate me too. <laughs> Don't be so mad. <laughs> you know they're watching. You know you're not going to be in there like that without somebody observing. 
Am I right? I think I looked at them both. They're both crazy. <laughs> and I just prayed and prayed. I said, wow, what did I do? Yeah. Five minutes later, I'm going to hell. I'm telling you the truth. There's no joke. I'm going to hell. Can't get me through it again. I got to worshiping a little bit, praying. I started praying up out of his belly. He began to pray in the spirit, lift his hands. Glory to God, praying in the Holy Ghost. And I said, now what? Now listen to me. Before you, before you got back in this, I'm going to hell statement. While he's mind is open. I said, uh, your mind's tormented. It's all in your mind. The enemy hijacked your brain. He's hijacked your mind. But your spirit's alive. That's why you can do this. You're alive unto God. Your spirit's alive unto God. Listen to me. It's alive unto God. And when you started praying, your tongue disconnected from your brain. And your tongue connected to your spirit. And you're alive unto God. Oh, I'm alive unto God. And it wasn't long after that. He got reconnected to the soul. And he started singing again. I dealt with that spirit. I dealt with that spirit. It's a stubborn spirit. And it takes me back to that article. How many people were in a mental institution, and when they surveyed them, that number was high. They're there. And what opened the door was the enemy convinced them they committed the unpardonable sin. The only sin that's not forgiven is that. And most people are not even capable of even committing that sin. Not even capable. If you read what the person has to walk in to do that, I've got people so mad because a son or a daughter, you know, some disasters happen, and they'll say, you know, I'll never serve God again. I'll never trust him again. Uh, this Holy Ghost business is nothing. But they're saying it out of a hurt soul. They don't really mean it. They're not committing the unpardonable sin. Because as soon as their heart's open again, it says they did it out of, out of, a, out of a troubled soul. But when you get to that place, where you allow sin come in so dark, that's a different story. So, every sin of omission, every sin of commission, even the ones I named, it didn't matter. Adultery, fornication, bestiality, homosexuality, pornography, whatever, it doesn't matter. Every one of these are redeemable. Redeemable. If the, if the power of darkness is broke and people can truly repent and turn from their wicked ways, the problem is, the deeper they get into it, the less they want to repent. But God's still there. He was there all the time. What is the song? Waiting patiently in the rain. He's there. So sin is death. Sin is death. Every time you sin, you're stepping into the death cycle. Sin produces death. The omission, that's why it's so dangerous. Because you can hide it, you justify it, but it's dangerous. That's what I tell people. If you sin against your spouse, you'll kill your marriage. You sin against your boss, you'll kill your job. You sin against your friends, you'll kill your friendship. Sin has death. And do not allow death to, to control or reign in you. And so we're going to break these down, the sin of omission. What, what are they? Uh, some examples. And hopefully, if you don't need to get out of it, you'll know somebody that you can help. You'll load your spiritual weapon and help somebody get out of it. Amen? 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 All right, let's stand together.